Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk about testosterone and weight loss, uh, specifically in men, and I want to do that by explaining and showing to you a case study um, from a patient that I treated. And so we're going to be talking about, we're going to spend this video and we're going to talk about how testosterone can help with weight loss. We're going to talk about what I think is the right way or um, how to use testosterone correctly, especially if your goal is just to improve quality of life, but also to improve, improve weight loss. Um, and we're going we're gonna to talk about what kind of treatment is necessary to get these, this type of result that you're looking at right now. So for reference, this is a 61-year-old male. He came in, and in fact, he actually didn't lose weight um, as defined by his scale, but he did lose a significant amount of fat mass. So probably what happened is, because he came in, and I can't remember what his weight was, but let's just say it was 170. He came in 170 looking like this, and then three months later, he came out 170 looking like that. And so what we can say for sure is that there was a redistribution of the percentage of muscle mass and fat, and fat mass in his body, such that fat mass went down and muscle mass went up. Okay, and so even though he lost probably 20 pounds of fat mass, his total weight didn't actually change. But let, but I think that that's a really important thing to talk about. So I want to talk about that just for a minute. And what we can see here is is the this image highlights the impact of how testosterone helps the male body. And truthfully, this works in women as well. And so, in women and men, testosterone can be used as a as an uh, I would say not as a sole weight loss therapy. In men, it's more of a sole weight loss therapy, um, but it also has other benefits. But in women, it can be added to other therapies to help with weight loss as well. And one of the ways that it does this is by altering the way that your body utilizes calories and energy. And so what happens is as you get older, testosterone levels fall. Most men know this, and this man was obviously 61. So he sort of hit that andropause sort of uh, age wherein testosterone levels were very tiny. And I can tell you, because I, I remember his before labs, it, his testosterone was 217, so it was it was quite low. And as of this image, I believe it was like in the seven or eight hundreds, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute here. But what happens is, as you age and as testosterone declines, your body starts to put uh, more energy allocation into it directs the the calories into your fat fat cells, your adipose tissue, and that causes them to grow, obviously. And so you can see here that the adipose tissue in the abdomen, so with belly fat, is increasing. And at, on the same side, or uh, on this image here, you can also see that the size of his muscles are somewhat smaller than they should be, especially smaller than what they would have been if he was younger, right? And then if we compare this to here, and by the way, just for your own sake and, and for comparison's sake, he didn't actually change any of his workout routines or anything like that. In fact, the majority of this was done while uh, he did a lot of running. That was just what he liked to do. And I think he just did some body weight exercises, maybe some push-ups or pull-ups. But he didn't do a lot of, lot of uh, lifting in the gym as I recall. But anyway, what we see here is as we give him testosterone, the testosterone redirects the calories f away from the fat cells to the muscle cells. And so you can see here that there's an enlargement in the muscle cells and a reduction in the fat. Okay, and that's exactly what's happening when we use testosterone. And that's one of the reasons why it's so beneficial. And you can see the same thing here as we as we look um, on uh, the on his uh, posterior view or his back. So let's talk about some of his therapies and his labs because I want to walk you through those. By the way, there's a ton of information on this page if you want to look it up, um, how testosterone supplementation works, how it helps with weight loss, and so on and so forth. But I want to specifically talk about his case study so that you have an idea, so that you can use it to determine if you feel like you're being treated adequately or not. Now, first of all, when you get when you consider TRT, especially if you're a man, you want to look beyond testosterone. There's more to your body than testosterone, and that includes other hormones like estrogen and thyroid, uh, cortisol, um, and so on. So there's lots of other things that you want to look at. Now, what you're looking at right here is his after testosterone. In fact, his before, I didn't show his before in here, but you can see his before here was 217, and this is his after. And so I believe this was probably about six weeks, or maybe it was at the three-month mark. But you can see his testosterone went up from 217 to 797, or about 800. And when you look at the range here, 250 to 1100, his 217 was on the low end of that range. And this happens all the time in men. As they get older, testosterone declines. I believe it's usually about 10% per decade is the is the average decline in most men. But that's accelerated by things like weight gain and insulin resistance and excessive stress and lack of sleep and so on. So it can be more than that. It just depends on what your body is dealing with. But anyway, he has a pretty good after response. Now, um, generally, I like to see it 700 plus, and I think that's where most men feel better. So if you're looking at this range and you're trying to figure out where you fit, let's say you fit at 350. Well, that's still pretty low when you consider the, the range is from 250 to 1100. So in that way, I kind of like it to be around 700 plus. And he hits kind of right there, and so I think that that's good. 
But again, for your references, before was 217. But we didn't just look at testosterone. We need to do more than that. So we looked at TSH. We looked at um, some of his other lab markers and so on. And we could tell that his thyroid wasn't functioning optimally as well either. And so I use 2.5 as a cutoff here. And I think that the newer, healthier ranges, especially newer studies, support that, that two, anything above 2.5 in regards to your TSH is abnormal. And so I did use a little bit of T3, which we'll talk about in a minute. But he also has what I, th what I call moderate B12. And if you're moderately B12 deficient, especially in the serum, there's a very good chance that your other cells don't have it. Um, because in order to get into your cells, it has to be altered and changed so that it can get in. He also has low ferritin. Um, and then if you look here as well, his, his iron is, is uh, low, his percent sat is low. So he has some other issues that he's been dealing with. And then he also has this. So he has an elevation in uh, tissue transglutaminase antibody and gliadin peptide antibody, which are markers for gluten sensitivity um, and celiac disease. So automatically, right away, we see that he has several things going on. And so, oh, and then lastly, sorry, I forgot about this. He also has an elevated fasting glucose. So his fasting glucose on a range of 65 to 99 was 105. So he's dealing with a, probably some early insulin resistance um, here as well. Now, um, I'll tell you what we did based off of looking at these things to get the results that you saw there. Now, a lot of men, what they'll do is they'll go to a TRT clinic and they'll just grab testosterone and they'll start injecting it. They may or may not use HCG or um, an estrogen blocker or things like that. And so when you do that in isolation, you still get some results, but I think you're limiting the um, what's available to you in terms of where you can get uh, your before and afters. And so that's why I wanted to use this sort of as an illustrative example to show you what you can get to if you look at this sort of whole whole body approach and you look at more than just the testosterone. So what do we do for this guy? Um, first thing is I put him on testosterone cypionate injections. And now this was his preference. Um, he, he Testosterone injections, especially testosterone and cypionate, um, is very inexpensive. Um, and so he preferred that because he was price sensitive, and I, that's fine. My preference would be to use a smaller dose of testosterone more frequently, but he wanted to be on that because of the price, and so we said that's fine. So he did uh, once a week injections, every seven days. That's what he did. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head his starting dose. Um, but anyway, we had him on once a week testosterone injections. We also did, generally what's a, what's a good idea is to add HCG, which stands for human chorionic gonadotropin. And we did this to this man as well. And what HCG does is it prevents testicular atrophy um, because it has some luteinizing hormone agonist properties which, which help to stimulate the the testicles to prevent them from shrinking and then also provides a slight boost of testosterone. So we did the HCG to do that. So he's taking testosterone plus HCG, H HCG. Then we added on a little bit of T3, which is the medication is called Cytomel. And this improves thyroid function and in him also helped re reverse that insulin resistance. And he was also suffering from depression. And so T3 actually can be used as a standalone treatment for depression in men and women, but I, th I find it to be particularly effective in men. So we're hitting a number of things here. So we added the T3. And then, then the other thing is we had him, I didn't have him change his diet with the exception of removing gluten to, to drop those antibodies. So I didn't have him go on, on any, anything real intense. Um, even though I would have probably liked him to clean up his diet more. Um, but, you know, you, you take what you can get. And so all he really did is remove that gluten. And, and then also at the same time, we replaced some of his nutrient deficiencies. So remember, he was a little low in iron. His B12 was, you know, moderate to suboptimal. I gave him a little bit of adrenal support as well to kick up that energy. And uh, we did a little vitamin D3 and some K2. So very basic stuff in terms of his supplementation. Um, and, and then the only other thing that I added to his lifestyle because I, I felt like it was pretty decent to begin with, with the exception of some of his symptoms, was we just I just had him do a little bit of intermittent fasting. So not a lot, but a little bit. And the, all of these therapies combined is what you see here in his before and after. And so basically what I want to do is just show you that this is a, a potential option. It does work. Again, I don't think it's going to work like this in every single man, so that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, but I think it's useful to look at this as a case study and to compare your results to, to this person's and to kind of determine what area might need a little more evaluation? Do you think you need more lab tests? Do you think you need to look at your estrogen? Do you think you need to look at other things? Now, I will tell you this guy was um, pretty lucky in the sense that we didn't really have to modulate his estrogen too much. Sometimes you do. It just depends on the man. Um, but he, he was pretty lucky in that way. So anyway, if you have any questions about this, leave them below. But I wanted to show you this case study and, and talk about it. If you have more questions, you can always go um, to this uh, blog on my on my website and you can read all about this and you can see more information and read about it. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.